If you've been following my channel, you know that I've been cooking up some super budget friendly Master Duel decks. And I've had a couple people in the comment section ask, which one of my videos is the best? Which one should I build? And to that, I say just play whatever's fun and cool to you. But for those of you who have a competitive nature and want to do more than just have fun, then in this video, I'm gonna take a deep dive into what I think about each of my at home decks, the pros and cons, and if it's worth investing into them. Here I've made a tier list to rank all of the budget decks I've made so far. Platinum Plus decks are decks that can comfortably get you to Platinum or above. Pretty competitive are decks that are just not as great as the Platinum Plus decks, but can still hold their own. Takes a good pilot are decks that are difficult to learn, but once mastered, can do really good. Play for fun are decks I wouldn't exactly recommend to climb the rank ladder with, but if you're looking to just play casually or with friends, then they're really good still. Hit by the ban list are decks that got hit by the ban list, they got banned cards, limited cards, so you will have to adjust them. Let's start with the first budget deck I've ever made, Sprites. At first, I thought it was gonna go to Hit by the Ban list, but I've realized that even though Sprite Blue and Jet are both semi-limited, this deck only runs one of each copy, so it's actually not really Hit by the Ban list at all. So I'm gonna move it up to Plat Plus tier. Sprites is a deck that will swarm your board with level 2 monsters so it can go into strong extra deck plays. This budget deck in particular is very consistent. It can definitely get you to Platinum Plus, it can OTK and make strong end boards. Investing into this deck is also a really good option because sprites are considered one of the best meta decks right now, adding cards like the Melfis and strong extra deck monsters like IP Mascarina can really improve this deck and get you to diamond easily. Next we have Dark Magicians. Dark Magician may be a fan favorite deck, but I think I'm gonna have to put it in play for fun. Dark Magician is a deck that uses Dark Magician spell trap cards to control the game state. It can snowball really hard into an unbreakable board. However, it is really slow to get started and it can be interrupted before that. So for that reason, it is in the play for fun deck. However, if you choose to invest into this deck, namely with the branded cards, it can turn into a really decent deck. All right, next deck we have is Exo Sisters. Exo Sisters, I'm gonna put them in pretty competitive. Exo Sisters' whole game plan is to make it so when your opponent tries to do anything with the graveyard, they're gonna have a really hard time doing so. This budget deck in particular is very strong and making pretty good end boards to banish a lot of your opponent's monsters. However, this deck can sometimes struggle to OTK your opponent and doesn't really have much follow-up plays. For that reason, I don't think it's strong enough to go into the Platinum Plus tier, but still pretty competitive. With more investment, with more copies of Martha and putting in some packs, this deck can become even more consistent and definitely bump it up to the Platinum Plus tier. The next deck we have is Rikas. Now Rikas is actually a really strong deck. I'm gonna put them in Platinum Plus. Rika Fairies are water plant monsters that like to tribute your opponent's monsters for cost. This allows them to get over boss monsters very easily. This deck is very consistent and can put up really strong, hard to break end boards with upwards to three interruptions or more. With more investment, you can make the combo even stronger and even add cards like the Therion cards to make the ceiling higher and get to diamond relatively easily. Moving on to punks now. Punks, I believe, are pretty competitive. The punk cards damage your own life points to activate powerful effects to synchro summon into big boss monsters on both your turn and the opponent's turn. A downside to the budget version is that it's not very consistent because it's lacking some of the more expensive punk cards, but it's easily solvable with more investment into the deck. I highly recommend adding the boss monster Psychic and Punisher because this monster makes it so when you take damage, it actually is a positive effect, making your Psychic and Punisher so much more difficult for your opponent to deal with. Okay, now Trap Tricks. Trap Tricks I'm unfortunately gonna have to put in play for fun. Trap Tricks is a trap based deck that can snowball into a win. However, in this budget version, you just don't have enough of the strong cards you need to make this deck good. And also, 
I made this budget deck before the new cards came out, so it didn't have that either. So this deck just wasn't consistent or strong enough to compete with a lot of the other decks I tried against. For that reason, this particular budget deck is in the play for fun, but with investment, it can definitely be going up to the Platinum Plus tier. Next we have Math Mech. Math Mech I'm going to put in the pretty competitive tier. For this particular budget Math Mech deck, it focuses on summoning Geo Math Mech Final Sigma as our end board. Final Sigma has the effect that it is unaffected by anything as long as it's in the extra monster zone. Now this strategy is pretty good if your opponent cannot out your Math Mech Final Sigma, but if they can, we still do have follow up plays, but we're gonna have to struggle a bit. With more investment into the deck, we can make our end board have more interruption so that we don't allow our opponent to do whatever the heck they want during their turn. It is definitely a deck that is very competitive and if you enjoy like Gundam or something, this is a very fun deck to play. Okay, now we're at tier limits. Although full power tier limits is considered the best deck in the game, my budget tier limit deck has too many cards that are banned or limited. So we do have to adjust a deck according to it. So that's why I'm gonna put it in hit by the ban list. Although, if you do change and adjust to the ban list, this can easily get you to pretty competitive or even platinum plus. The tournament strategy involves around sending your monsters into the graveyard to fusion summon into strong boss monsters. Investing into this deck with more copies of Rhino Heart, copies of Shirin, some Ishizu cards, and maybe some Bisseals as well. Filling out the extra deck makes this deck a very good deck can easily get you to diamond and above. Plunder Patrol is going to be in the takes a good pilot tier. Although it is very difficult to get a grasp of how to play this deck, once mastered, it can be moved into pretty competitive. And if you're so good at this deck, you can even go into platinum plus. Plunder Patrol's whole gimmick is special summoning their pirate ships based on the attributes that your opponent controls. For example, if they have a light attribute monster in their field or graveyard, you can summon the light attribute ship from your extra deck. What makes this deck difficult to play is all the different choices you have. There's no linear combo in this deck. Mastering this deck can take some time. A con for this deck is if your opponent doesn't have the attribute you need, you can struggle to summon your ships. Investing into this deck can be pretty good. Adding Jord makes it so that you don't require your opponent to have the attribute you need, you can just give it to them yourself. Next up we have Goaties. I, it's borderline pretty competitive and takes a good pilot, but I'm going to put it in takes a good pilot. Reason being, it is not a complicated deck to master or learn, however, the power isn't the greatest and you do need to learn the matchups of when to activate effects to truly interrupt your opponent. I don't think it is as strong as the pretty competitive decks. It's slightly weaker. So I'm going to put it at the top of takes a good pilot. Goaties or fish is a strategy that involves around synchro summoning on your opponent's turn and banishing lots of cards. In this particular budget deck, you can make very strong end boards with upwards to 3 interruptions. However, this strategy can be easily interrupted on your turn with Ash Blossom, making this deck not very consistent even with more investment. If you do want to invest in this deck though, you can always add more copies of Godi the Deep Beyond for more banishing capabilities. Alright, next is Nechuria Verniselfs. I'm gonna put this deck in Platinum Plus here. While Nechuria does take a good pilot to play, because of the fact that Nechuria Beast can sometimes auto win you the game, preventing your opponent from using any spells, I believe that alone allows it to be in the Platinum Plus tier. Of course, once you get better at the deck, you can push this deck even further beyond. For investing into this deck, you can add extra deck staples like Barone de Fleur to really make your deck even stronger and give you more flexibility depending on your matchups. Next deck is Black Wings. Black Wings, I am going to put in takes a good pilot. 
Blackwing is definitely a takes a good pilot deck. The combo line for this deck is ridiculously long. It took me a while to learn. The goal for this budget deck was to summon out Blackwing Assault Dragon and basically burn your opponent until you won. You also have the boss monster, Blackwing Full Armor Master to get you out of sticky situations. If you want to invest in this deck, I highly recommend crafting No Thunk the Starlight. This allows you to combo much easier and make even stronger end boards. Next up we have for hires. I believe for hires belong in the takes a good pilot tier. For a hire is indeed a very complicated deck to master. There are lots of different combo lines you can do in for hire, but the payoff is pretty good. Being able to draw three cards on both turns is pretty insane. The deck has lots of recursion, so you can really grind out your opponent that way. If you're looking to invest into for hires, a lot of people play them with runic and sprite with a lot of competitive success. On to Ad Emancipators now. I believe Ad Emancipators belongs in the Platinum Plus tier. This budget Ad Emancipator deck is very competitive. It makes very strong end boards, lots of interruptions. The whole gimmick of this deck is to excavate the top of your deck and special summon level 4 or lower rock monsters. The only con for this deck is that sometimes you don't hit the cards you want and it's all really down to luck. But with more investment, adding cards like Doki Doki, Kawaii Meru Supplier, Kawaii Meru Guardian, Small World is going to increase the consistency of the deck. Also, you can look into cards like Ishizu, Fairy Tale Snow, the grass looks greener to really bump up the power level of the deck. In terms of extra deck, adding cards like Supreme Sovereign Chingying, IP Mascarina, and Appaloosa will make your end boards even more stronger. I'm gonna put Branded in the pretty competitive tier. While full power Branded is usually a top meta contender, it is a very expensive deck, making the budget version that much weaker. Although it's still pretty strong, being able to summon out Mirror Jade alone can sometimes just win you the game by itself. This deck has a very good grind game, but like the typical branded deck, it does lose to hand traps pretty easily. If you're looking to invest more into the branded strategy, you're going to have to have a lot of gems. Adding more copies of Mirror Jade is always a plus. Bestials is also very good now that they're out in the game. Filling out the extra deck with all the different branded monsters and also Guardian Chimera will definitely boost the power level of this deck significantly. Up next is Marincess. I think Marincess is going to go in the pretty competitive tier. Marincess is a deck that likes to summon now one big strong boss monster that is really difficult to out for your opponent. If your opponent can't out the monster, you basically just win. However, if the opponent does manage to out your board, you're going to have some trouble. For investing into this deck, you can look into cards like Cyanet Mining to increase consistency. Also for the extra deck, cards like World Sea Dragon Zealantis and Marinces Aqua Argonaut are great additions to the deck. Alright, now we've got Heroes. Heroes is definitely in the Takes a Good Pilot tier. The strategy for my particular hero budget deck is to just turbo out our boss monster, Destroyer Phoenix Enforcer. The deck is a little bit clunky because of the fact that the entire hero engine is mad expensive, so it can be a little bit inconsistent. And our end board is not entirely the greatest compared to a full powered hero deck, but it can still get the job done. If you're looking to invest into heroes, you can look at cards like Elemental Hero Stratos for more consistency in the main deck. And for the extra deck, we have cards like Masked Hero Dark Law, Elemental Hero Sunrise to really boost up the potential of this deck. But be warned, the full power hero deck is really expensive and very difficult to learn. Labyrinth, I think, is definitely a Platinum Plus tier deck. One thing Labyrinth does that I think really makes them stronger than other trap decks is being able to very easily search out traps that you need. You never really run out of traps, and that's what makes your deck snowball into a win so hard. The only con is that since it's a trap deck, going second may be an issue, but with Ku Clock, you can turn this around and make their turn your turn. Overall, the deck is very consistent. 
If you're looking to invest in the Labyrinth strategy, you should definitely look at cards like Lovely Labyrinth and Big Welcome Labyrinth for the main deck. This will boost the consistency and power of the deck even further. For a better Dogmatica Punishment target, you should consider adding Elder Entity Natis. This allows you to pop two cards instead of just one. Also, with the new pack that's out, adding Chaos Angel into the deck makes the deck even more of a threat. Since you can special summon this from the graveyard with your Labyrinth Labyrinth field spell over and over. Next we have Generators. I believe Generators deserve the pretty competitive tier. Generators is a strategy that will activate effects when opponents add cards from deck to hand. They also have a unique way to get rid of problem boss monsters because instead of destroying or banishing them, they attach them to their Xyz monsters instead. If you're looking to invest more into this deck, cards like Kujikuri Curse and Diviner of Herald are great choices to add to make your deck more consistent. Next up we have Sword Soul. Sword Soul I believe deserves the Platinum Plus tier. The Sword Soul strategy involves in Synchro Summoning with Worms. My particular budget deck is very consistent and can summon out pretty good monsters and can end on a really good board with upwards of 3 to 4 interruptions. If you want to invest into Sword Soul, you should look into cards like Sword Soul Supreme Sovereign Chengying, Arch Nemesis Protoss. That card can probably win you the game by itself even. Draco Berserker of the Ten Yi, and just more copies of Moye. And finally we have Cash Tira. Cash Tira definitely deserves the Platinum Plus tier. Cash Tira is a strategy that revolves around banishing your opponent's cards, then locking your opponent's monster and spell trap zones so that they can't use them. My budget deck definitely does lack a little bit of consistency, but it's otherwise very strong. It is easily solvable by investing a little bit more into it by adding more copies of Unicorn, Fenrir, and Riseheart. Also, adding more copies of Shangri-Ra and Diabolosis is a definite plus. Another mention is number 11 Big Eye for another option of removal. This deck can definitely overwhelm your opponent before they even realize it. So that is the tier list done. Of course, everything in this tier list is obviously my opinion. You can agree or disagree with this. And again, the best deck to choose is always the deck that you enjoy. Play for fun, it's supposed to be a game. And uh, other than that, have a great day, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!